guys, guys, cut the bells, cut the bells, cut the bells. Sometimes the most enjoyable birding experiences come from traveling to habitats with specialized species. Particular types of plants and terrain can bring in sets of animals that are uniquely suited to survive in places that at first glance look like they wouldn't hold much life. This was the case when we searched a scrubby habitat in California, hoping to locate two species that have found a way to thrive in what at first looks like inhospitable habitat. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Derek from Badgerland Birding. Today we're in California with our guide Rachel and we're in a very unique habitat looking for some bell sparrows and lacan thrashers. The habitat we would be searching in is called saltbush scrub, consisting of dry and dusty soil as well as low to medium height bushes thick enough to conceal the elusive species we were hoping to see. Rachel told us that she's basically convinced we're not going to get any media of Lacan's thrashers, so I take that as a challenge. So if we get anything, she said it'd be good, so I'm, I'm hoping I can get it to perch on my arm, we can get a cell phone picture, and we'll see what happens. But Bell Sparrow looks really neat too, so those are two specialty birds we get here in California in this unique habitat. While one may think that there isn't much to see out in the open country, one feature of the landscape really stuck out to us. So out here on the way to our Leconte Thrasher and Bell Sparrow spot, there's tons of oil pumps and it looks a little dystopian because originally we saw a couple and they're like, oh, they're kind of like dotting the fields and then we were in this big, like, mix of a bunch of different looking ones. So they're definitely doing a lot of oil production out here. Uh, it's pretty barren, so hard to say how much this is actually impacting like bird habitat, but it's definitely an interesting thing to see that we don't have in the Midwest. After about a two hour drive, we arrived on the road we would be scouring. It took no time at all for Rachel and her keen ear to hear both of our targets. That's a thrasher, that's a Leconte thrasher singing. Oh. Okay, that's a bell, so just sang. Guys, we got a bell really close to us. This is our first look at this actual habitat. Guys, guys, cut the bells, cut the bells, cut the bells. And just like that, we picked up what turned out to be one of the easiest lifebirds of the trip. Bell sparrows are fairly long-tailed sparrows with a brown back and gray head. Some of the features to note are their white eye ring, dark spot on the chest, and black and white stripes on and below the cheeks. Juvenile bell sparrows have streaking on the underside that makes them look vastly different than the adults. These sparrows can only be found in a few parts of North America, including California and Baja California. In non-breeding season, they can also be found in parts of Arizona but are much more scarce than in their breeding range. The bell sparrow's diet changes depending on the season. During the breeding months, these sparrows feed mostly on insects, other small invertebrates such as spiders, and fruits. Other times of the year, they feed primarily on seeds from plants such as grasses. Bell sparrows can be found in scrubby habitats with low bushes. Some of the plants found in these areas include saltbush, sagebrush, and yucca. Coastal chaparral can also be a good place to locate this species, provided the bushes are fairly low. Bell sparrows are the easiest to find during breeding season, when males sit up in the open and sing. The rest of the year they can be tricky to see, as they stay low to the ground in the thick scrub. The bell sparrow used to be lumped with a similar looking sagebrush sparrow as a species simply known as the sage sparrow. Over time, these two species have been lumped and split again on multiple occasions, and are now listed as two separate species for the foreseeable future. That was like within two, three seconds after we opened the door, we had a bell sparrow up and singing. This habitat is so unique, and so we have one of our targets already. We're going to try to get some closer views, but there's also the Lacan's thrasher somewhere in here. So we triangulated our two targets, and we'll hopefully we'll get a view on the Lacan's thrasher. Having found target bird number one, we turned our attention to target bird number two. We heard a Lacan's thrasher from the road where we saw the bell sparrow, but we wanted to actually get a video of these tough to lock onto birds. We moved farther down the road, finding a fair amount of bird species. Most of what we saw were more bell sparrows, which actually proved to be extremely numerous. Also in the vicinity were morning doves and northern mockingbirds. 
these notorious mimics made sounds very similar to that of the Leconte's thrasher. Throughout our searching, we took in the landscape, which was different than anything else we had seen in California. This habitat definitely has its own unique kind of beauty. It's very arid, it's very dry and dusty, and there's just low bushes everywhere as far as the eye can see. But there are some mountains in the background. It's actually very beautiful. Eventually, we lucked out and got a quick seconds-long glimpse of a Leconte's thrasher. We saw the thrasher! It exists! I just got a three-second video of that thrasher. Woohoo! I'm so happy! Leconte's thrasher is awesome. It's our palest thrasher. And not only that, they occupy more arid, sparsely vegetated habitat than other thrashers. And another fun fact about the Leconte's thrasher is that while they do have that sing-songy, repetitive thrasher-like song, it's a little bit squeakier than a lot of other thrashers. And also, they don't mimic other birds. So, fun factoid. And these guys have a really, a really, really skulky, hard-to-get-good, lasting looks at. So, a three-second video is awesome. In addition to the quick thrasher views and the bell sparrow, we also had a loggerhead shrike that was perched up. There's been some morning doves, California quail is making some noise as well. But I think as far as the two main things you can get here that specialize, we got them both. So now it's just off to get some more looks and we'll see what we can do. We were about to move on to a different habitat altogether and close the book on our Leconte's thrasher experience when we spotted one from the car that just happened to be sitting out in the open. Amazingly, even after stopping the car, the thrasher obliged in giving us way better looks than we were expecting. As we were leaving, we had a Leconte's thrasher perch up, so we pulled over and got some shots of it. Um, that's super exciting, because I, I, Rachel told us they don't really sit up and stay. So it feels like we, uh, we kind of won the lottery with that look we just had. Feeling extremely satisfied with our experience in the saltbush scrub, and having thoroughly enjoyed our time with the Bell Sparrow and Leconte's Thrashers, we moved on to our next adventure. Every birding trip ends up being different, with new habitats, new species, and new events all culminating in a totally unique experience. This was our first ever try at seeing these two species, and we would have had a much more difficult time finding them if not for Rachel, who not only knew the right places to go, but could easily pick them out by sound. If you'd like to book a birding trip with Rachel, you can do so by following the link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.